If you've been watching the news recently, you would have probably noticed that the process for student loan forgiveness has been frozen. For most college students in America, college is only accessible with the use of either financial aid or student loans. Unfortunately, the average student loan debt balance has grown by nearly 92% since 2009, and more students are graduating college with thousands of dollars in debt. What's even worse is the fact that some of these degrees did not end up guaranteeing a job that is high paying enough to afford these loan payments. So this is obviously a major problem, but in this video, I'll be sharing some strategies that help me graduate college without any loans and even better with a high paying full time cybersecurity job long before my graduation. First, here is some context into how much college actually cost me. I spent two semesters at Collin County Community College, which is a local community college in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And due to the fact that I was paying out of state fees at the time, my first semester cost me $2,527. Adding the cost of books and other learning resources, this eventually amounted to $3,000. My second semester at Collin, I had fixed the issue with my residency, so the cost of my in-state tuition had become $1,520, but also factoring the cost of books and other learning resources, this amounted to roughly $2,000. So for the entire year that I spent at Collin County Community College, my tuition had cost me $5,000 for two semesters. After this, I transferred to Dallas County Community College, which is also a local community college in the DFW area. In the three semesters that I spent at Dallas College, from summer to spring, I only spent $1,618, but factoring other resources which were very minimal, this ended up costing me $2,000. Also bear in mind the fact that Dallas College costs were post Pell Grant, so this really subsidized the cost to a very variable minimum. So in total, the entire cost of my community college education for roughly two years amounted to an estimated amount of $7,000 give or take. After my two years at the community colleges, I transferred to WGU where I completed my Bachelor's of Science in IT in two terms. The first term cost me only $1,397 after the federal Pell Grant. Bear in mind that the Pell Grant covered $2,123. And the second term cost me $1,798 after the federal Pell Grant. And the Pell Grant covered $2,122 for the second semester. So in total, for the two six-month terms that I spent at WGU, amounted to one year, I spent $3,195. In conclusion, my entire college education cost me $10,195. Now looking back, I could have probably bought an entry-level Rolex Explorer with that, but decisions, decisions, decisions. With that being said, here's actually how I was able to afford this education without breaking the bank. First tip that I have for anyone out there who wants to go to college without breaking the bank is, if you're in high school right now, take a gap year. If you're not sure about what you wanna do, take a gap year to work. Yes, that's the caveat, you have to work. This is not about traveling or exploring or having fun or anything like that. The goal here is to stack up your bread so you can have some money in reserves that can last you a decent amount of time, at least for your first year of college. As someone who took a gap year myself, for this reason, I can tell you it really, really helps. So take the gap year. Don't care about what anybody says. Take the gap year and work and save your money. The second tip is to do internships or part-time jobs. This should go without saying. If you don't have the money or like myself, you don't come from a rich family, you have to work to make the money. Now, I recommend smart work like internships. So for example, I was already applying for internships and part-time IT jobs for my very first semester of college. I mean, freshman year of college. So during this entire period, I had filled several interviews and I'd learned enough to eventually land a cybersecurity internship before the end of my freshman year of college. The cybersecurity internship was paying about $15 a hour and I was clocking in about 30 to 40 hours a week. Mind you, this was during the pandemic and was fully remote, so I was able to save all of my money and put that back into my personal education, investing, college, as well as savings. I was also able to turn this internship into a full-time job at another company before the end of sophomore year of college, and this drastically increased my income, my ability to save, as well as the affordability of my education. I've made several videos on these topics and I recommend you check them out. Link will be in the description below. The third tip is to attend community colleges. Look, 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 look. Trust me, I don't care what anyone says, community colleges are the actual cheat code. Legit cheat code, for real. If you can't afford your dream school right now, go to a community college. It's the best thing 
you could do. It's more affordable, much smaller class sizes, more access to professors and workforce resources, and so many other benefits. And the same classes you would take at a university for literally half or even a fourth of the price. Why would you pay four times the cost of a class that you can't afford? To me, that sounds like a bad financial decision. Look, trust me. Okay, trust me, I get it. Even when I went to a community college and some other people I knew were going to state schools or bigger schools, they looked down on me even though they couldn't afford it, but I didn't care because I work smart and I make smart decisions and I'm trying to get you to do that too. So block out all the noise and stigma about community colleges and utilize them to your own advantage. The fourth tip is to use all scholarships and financial aid. Now I can't speak much to this because I never had much luck with scholarships even though I applied to a bunch but do apply and utilize them. Also make sure you speak to like a financial aid advisor and make sure to use your financial aid because financial aid was something that definitely helped me get through college at a really affordable price. So definitely apply if you fit into the category and make sure to use it. It's your benefit. The fifth tip is to live at home. I was one of those kids who when I started making a little bit of money I wanted to move out but it would have probably been a regrettable financial decision of course I might have learned from it but we're trying to work smart here. So if you have the luxury of parents who support you with food and shelter don't throw that away. It could give you a really really good head start and help you save a lot of money. The extra $500 you've spent on rent or other things like utilities or even feeding could have been saved or even put back into your education. Now I understand that living at home may not be conducive for some but I'll leave that to your discretion. Well that's it for this video. If you want to learn more about how to get a cybersecurity internship check out the video to the left of the screen and if you want to learn more about how to turn an internship into a full-time job check out the video to the right of the screen. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.